Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the lookout. It's the 6th of September. It's Labor Day. So thanks to all the workers of the world, uh, especially the workers that are digging ditches on the east side of the Plumas. All right. We're going to start on the bottom southeast corner of Dixie Fire, which has continued to be very active. Um, especially yesterday afternoon. Uh, late afternoon has kind of been the witching hour here on Dixie. So we're, um, here's Grizzly Ranch in Portola at the bottom of the screen. We're looking north, uh, coming in kind of over the Beckworth, Genesee Road, Lake Davis. So yesterday the fire um, started the day, uh, 8,000 acres smaller here squirted out pretty hard to the east and uh, has burned into the Beckworth fire. Um, there's a bunch of new dozer line out here that um, seems to be working out about as well as all the other dozer line we put in here on fires like the Beckworth. Uh, so we're going to come along here. Main thing about this, um, this south end that's problematic is just that it's, um, you know, it's looking pretty good over here in the valley where I've uh, been able to tie it into the roads and hasn't moved for a couple of days. Um, but the problem with it over here as we come farther east is it's just in this country that is a really tough place to fight fire. And uh, the biggest problem we've got right now is just that it's going to take us quite a bit of time to, to secure this edge. And as long as it's open, we've got you know about five miles of open fire line. Uh, on the south end that's exposed to east winds and north winds. And this is the time of year that we start to expect to get those. So uh, there's no major winds forecast in the next couple days. Um, there is a pattern change coming later in the week that um, is going to, they haven't really forecast what the winds are going to be yet. But that's the biggest problem with the fire at this point. It's just that we've got quite a bit of unsecured line on the south. But if we get a strong east wind or south or north wind, um, could take it back out to the west and threaten um, the Highway 70 corridor again. But as I said, no, uh, no east winds or north winds forecast for a few days, giving us some time, but it does take time to tie things up out here just because uh, of the conditions that the access and uh, the rugged nature of the land. You know, this is some really, some pretty gnarly country. You can kind of look at this map and think that if it is possible to drive a bulldozer there, uh, it's already been done, right? Okay, coming out here to the um, east side of the fire, the fire, um, you know, we call this big drop off from the top of the mountains down to Highway 395, the escarpment. You'll hear us talking about that a lot. Um, fire has come down in a few places here um, over the past several days, really. A bit of a new run here this uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, I can't really tell you if that mapping is accurate where it shows it across the dozer line or not. These maps are made from uh, airplanes flying at 20,000 feet, sometimes or greater. And so um, you can't always tell if it's um, the most precise thing. So uh, I don't ever try to call out little slops like that off of this imagery. All right, <coughs> kids woke up, had to change back to my bathroom location here. Anyway, um, this is last night as of about 9.30 p.m. Uh, fire was coming down towards Herlong Junction and the Mark. So we're going to move now to the northeast side of the fire. Um, southeast seems likely to stay active for a while. So coming in here, um, just to orient you, here's Westwood. Lake Almanor, we're going to go up Highway 21 here. Still quite a bit of scattered heat happening out here in Caribou Wilderness. A few little runs happening, places that um, got missed earlier in the fire. But here's where we've been talking about um, for the last several days is out here near, near Bogard, west of Highway 44, where um, we had this area that blew out during firing operations about um, a week ago, and it's now filled in 
we've been able to hold it here at the Westwood Logging Road, which is uh, for locals is kind of the cutoff that goes from the end of A21 where it turns over towards Bogard. Uh, yesterday afternoon, evening, there was a 30 acre spot here, uh, not across 44, but out near Bogard Campground. Um, one thing that'll be interesting to watch here um, and seeing how it spreads is that these areas in white around the spot are um, plantations that were masticated. And mastication is kind of like a giant drum mower that shreds trees and brush. And it's used to you know, go into heavy areas of brush or plantations or other things like that. And you can shred trees that are you know, 10 inches in diameter. And it's, um, it's got some uses, some places that it's good to use, but other places it just creates this huge pile of kindling. And especially here on the east side where um, things take forever to rot because it's so dry, uh, we don't get a lot of precip. You know, sometimes mastication just ends up creating a huge pile of kindling. Um, and oftentimes there's so much material left in a masticated unit that we can't even prescribe burn it for years or we'll kill everything else that's around. So I'm um, curious to see, you know, mastication does show up on this uh, hazard reduction layer. It's not always a hazard reduction, but sometimes it does buy firefighters advantage. Anyway, we'll see what that spot does. The rest of this was pretty well behaved. There were some spots here. Um, and just, you know, listening to the briefings, this just kind of continues to devil them, this part of the fire. Um, we've talked a lot now about um, how difficult it is to fight fire on the east side under these critical conditions, just how spotting continues to eat our lunch and just goes to show that you can have hundreds of people doing tons of work and you get one spot here, you know, half a mile outside your line and uh, it doesn't take very long at all for all that to go out the window. Coming across the north end of the fire here following Highway 44, we're going back over to Prospect Peak area. Um, south of Old Station. Uh, we've talked a lot now about the Reading Fire. You know, it's kind of, the Reading Fire is almost like its whole own story inside the Dixie. Um, big news here yesterday is that the fire ran. Uh, you know, the fire has been kind of skunking its way into the Reading Fire for almost a month. Uh, but often what happens is you just, you can't assume that what happened yesterday will happen tomorrow and this ran a mile. Uh, we've got, you know, we had that alignment. We're looking up the um, drainage of Hat Creek and had alignment of winds and the fuels and uh, super dry and hot conditions. It ran a mile. So this is still about two miles, two to three miles away from the edge of the reading fire. But it does add some urgency to the idea that um, we want to tie in this northern edge of the Reading Fire on the kind of northwest side of Prospect Peak. Um, the desire is to connect the dots across the bottom here. And um, all these white polygons are fuels treatments. You can see that the Reading Fire, there's places it burned really hot and there's places that it didn't. And that's making it really difficult for us to, to secure the edge. Because you know, we're worried that we can have runs down here along these stringers of fuels that remain from the fire, um, but then it's hard for us to come in and get our firing operations to carry in these patches where there's no fuel. So um, it's tough because you've got kind of continuous bands of fuel here that run out into the green. And yeah, so it's a tough challenge. A friend of mine's taking over this section as the branch director, and I wish him well. And, you know, one thing about these fires, like the reading, is that this patchy severity gives you a patchy um, fuel bed for the next fire, which is good from a kind of diversity ecological standpoint, but it makes for some tough challenges for firefighters in that we've got, you know, areas where it's hard for us to use our, our best tools for containment, which are to put a fire on the ground and get a good solid amount of black. So tough challenge, but the good news about reading and you know, as we keep repeating is just that the fact that it's taken almost a month for the fire to spread even halfway across the burn just shows us that it bought us a lot of time to figure out how to deal with this. You know, it, and it's good that we didn't have to try to button up this edge of the fire you know, three weeks ago when we were focused on saving.
all the homes in Lake Almond or Westwood, Clear Creek. Anyway, that's the briefing for this morning. Um, we're going to keep watching this and uh, we'll keep you posted. We appreciate all your support and um, looking forward to being back in our own studio, not in a bathroom somewhere. Um, going home today. <laughs>